In this video, we will see some of the tools available for us when we work with pivot tables. So when you select a cell within the pivot table, you will see these two ribbons up here. One is the options, another one is the design. So let me open the design one first. And you have some layout options where you can choose to not show subtotals or not, or show subtotals at the top or bottom. So the subtotals here, for example, we have the total for each author, and then we have the sales for each of the books. For example, here, we have these two books that Jawaharlal Nehru is the author for, and the sum of these two is shown here. So this is the subtotal, and then we have the grand total here, which is the sum of all of the books in the store as the order location. So now those are subtotals and grand totals. So we can choose to show the subtotals. For example, if I choose not to show, then those subtotals will disappear. I can either choose the subtotals at the bottom of the group. Here we have Jawaharlal Nehru, and then we have the books that he's the author for. And then there's a Jawaharlal Nehru total, which is a subtotal that we just now told Excel to show. Or we can say, show it at the top of the group, which is the author name and then the subtotal and then the books and then the sales. So we can decide to control how we want to lay out our pivot table. So the next one is the grand totals. The grand totals, we can either say show for rows only or columns. So let me show on for rows only, which means we have a grand total here, but then there's no grand total for all the store sales or all the website sales. So if I want to see them, then I will choose on for both rows and columns. Now we'll have a grand total here and a grand total here. And there are some more options where you want to change how the pivot table report looks like. Uh, and you can also insert a blank line after each item if that makes it more easy for the reader to understand your pivot table. And then we have some style options here. So we can either have the row headers, which is, let me uncheck that. So the row headers went away, and now we have the row headers highlighted again in bold. Similarly, the column headers here, this is the column header, and now when I turn it back on, you will see them highlighted in bold font. And we can also have banded rows, which are alternating shaded rows or shaded columns, if you want. And there are also some color choices available pre-built, and you can choose any of these, or you can make your own and I'm gonna just leave it as it is. And these are the design options. We also have some more options available in the options ribbon. And let's look at some of the key options available here. The first one is a slicer. So this is basically a report filter, which is, for example, here we have the book type as a report filter. And this is just a prettier and more interactive report filter. So I'm going to hit insert slicer. And now Excel asks me from all these fields available in our pivot table, which ones do we want to use for slicer? So I'm going to just use the month and click OK. And now we have the slicer object. And this is a slicer. Since the slicer is selected, we have a new ribbon which helps us control the colors and uh, also how many columns we have in the slicer. I can choose two columns. I can control the, the button height and the width. So if I make it narrower, they look like this. And I can also control the height of the slicer itself. So I'm gonna make it shorter. So now we have a nicer looking object and I can use this um, to actually control the data that's used for this pivot table. So it's just like the book type. So I can insert another slicer, for example, by going here to options, insert another slicer, and I can choose book type. And again, similarly, I can size it however I want. So if you think about it, this book type filter or the slicer is similar to the filter that we have here. So if I choose hardcover and click OK, you see that this slicer also updated. So all of these are interlinked. So when I make a change here, this updates. And when I make a change here, this will update. 
but this is a nicer way of interacting for the user compared to going and selecting from here. And this is what the slicer is. A slicer is a nicer way of creating interactive report filters. And here, for example, we have all 12 months of data here. If I want to just see first month's data, then I click one and then the data now updates. Similarly, if I want to see, let's say one first month and the fourth month, I can press control and then click here on four. And now my data has the first and the fourth month's worth of data. And now if I want to select one through eight, so I'm going to click one, I'm pressing shift key and then pressing on eight. And now I have selected all the eight. So it's much easier to select things and it's also more intuitive. So these are called the slicers and these were introduced in Excel 2010. You can have any number of slicers and they all work together on the same pivot table. The next thing in the options ribbon I wanted you to know about is the data source. So you can click here and then change the data source. And when you do that, Excel tells you right now, this is what is our source for the pivot table, which is our sales worksheet from cell A1 to 0569. And if I want to change this, I can make a change here and I can change it to, let's say, only 469, which means the first 469 rows will be selected. And I click OK. And now my table only reflects that data source. So I want to go here again and say change data source. I can change it to, and I can also use this to go and select cells. This is easier for me. I'm going to click OK. And now my data source is refreshed and my pivot table is refreshed. Now the next thing is the refresh button here. And as you can see here, when the underlying data itself changes, for example, let's say there is a new book type that we enter in our books and we go back to this and let's say we change these values for the book type and here and then replace it with a brand new book type, for example, paper book or something like that, then Excel, even though the pivot table that we have is pointing to that data source, it doesn't automatically pick up changes in values. And so it will still only say these are the three book types. So we have to come here and hit refresh. There are a couple of ways you can hit refresh. You can come here and click this button refresh, or you can right click here and then choose refresh. So when you hit refresh, Excel will go and re collect the data and now it will pick up the new book type name that we have in our data. Now the next thing we have in the options ribbon that we want to talk about is calculated fields. So for example here if you go to the fields items and sets and you can actually see insert calculated field and this is something which you can do and to in order to illustrate that I'm just going to go ahead and create a new pivot table. So I'm going to go and create a new sheet and then insert pivot table and Excel will ask me where is the source of my data. I'm going to go back here and then choose the same data source and I want to click OK. So now we have created a, a new pivot table report in our new sheet and we can rename the sheet if we want. I'm going to say I want to see by month. Let's say I want to know by month. I want to know the average selling price. So what I can do is to create a calculated field. It's nothing but average selling price is nothing but the sales information divided by quantity. And so I'm going to choose quantity and say OK. So now Excel has created a new field which does not exist in our source data, but it's now created a new calculated field. And this calculation is nothing but sales divided by quantity. I can go to the field settings and now it will say it's summarizing it. It's not calculating anything. It is doing it as it is. But if I go to calculated field and I choose ASP, I can see the formula that I used to create that calculated field. And this field is now part of the list of fields that we can use in our pivot tables. So this is again, if you don't need it, 
If you don't need it, you can hit delete. If you want to change it, you can change it. So this is how you can create calculated field. Again, I'm trying to just get you started in pivot tables. So I'm trying to keep these examples very simple. And there are a lot more complex things that we can do with pivot tables. But this is a simple example of how we can insert a calculated field in, in pivot tables. And now finally for this section, we can actually copy a pivot table. So I can select these, control C to copy, and I can go here and control V to paste. And this is a very convenient way of copying and pasting a pivot table. So this is a completely separate pivot table than this one.